Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable podcast, we have no roundtablers because it's July and everyone takes off. But I, of course, am working because I took June off. And I've got a special treat for you, dear listener. It is always our favorite and most popular podcasts when we have a coaching client on talking about their journey. And this week, we have Team Gelber, Dr. Ashley and Derek Gelber from thefifthhorse.com, the Fifth Horse Land Company. And they have quite the journey. So Ashley, Dr. Ashley, Derek, welcome. Thank you for having us, Mark. Yeah, excited to be here. So glad you guys are making time to do this because it's all everybody's always inspired by someone else's journey and and hearing it because you're just a little bit further ahead than the listener and what they're doing in their land investing business. So let's just rewind the tape. Like, how did you guys even find land geek and land investing? So we started a a, a remodel rental you know, business where we would buy homes and remodel them and rent them out. And, um, you know, I was on the phone with one of my mentors um, one day talking about like, I don't know, the latest remodel. And he's like, he's like, Hey, go get this book. He's like, I read it last night. He's like, literally I read it in one night. And um I think you're just going to dig it, man. It's like all the, all the nonsense that we deal with, with tenants and, you know, roofs and ACs and all this stuff. He's like, there's a guy out there that just like buys land and he teaches you how to do it. So I bought it on Amazon. And then when it came in, I read it that night and I, and at the back of the book, it was your book. It was dirt rich. And um, you had your email. So I literally finished the last page, read, uh, emailed you, and you wrote back. And you hooked me up with um, Scott Bossman, and um, we just kind of felt our way through um, the next steps of how to take what you laid out in your book to, like, some reality. And um, that's how we started. I do want to add. At the time he was reading the book, I was kind of running around the house, like cleaning up or whatever. And he's like, hey, Ashley, get this. And he read a part of your book that was like, if you love finding a great deal, this is for you or something, something to that effect. And I was like, I'm down. Let's go. So like, that's like my favorite thing to do is find the good deal. And it like makes my day. So that's like. The full picture, and yep. yeah, we were we we were rocking and rolling with Scott Bo- Bossman the next day. So, yeah, that's uh, that that's so funny. That's awesome. Okay, so then you guys go into flight school. Yeah, what what, what was that like? Gosh, going back, it seems like ages ago. Um, even though it was only like a year and a half ago, you know, um, that was exciting because Scott Todd is a master. Like, and you knew it the moment you were in it. And um, we're just like feverishly doing everything that we're told and like following the recipe and like week to week, we were just excited, you know, for the next thing. We're like, we're ready. Let's do it. Let's go. Like, tell us what to do and we'll do it. And it was really cool to to have that. And we also did the um, accounting for land investors on top of it, like simultaneously. So that was critical too. I highly recommend that for anybody starting out. So yeah, yeah, flight school was awesome. And the cool thing about like flight school was um, it was right out of the gate. So day one, here's what we're doing. There was no like, you remember in college, you look forward to the first day of class because all they do is give you the syllabus and there's no real like stuff being done. Well, there was no cruising here. It was like, Hey, you're, you're here to go to school and we're literally going to do, you know, pricing matrices and deals and marketing, like right now with you, like we're going to hold your hand and do that. 
um, which was so crucial because uh, you it's like reading your book, you get an idea of the hope and dreams and possibilities, but there's this huge gap, like, okay, now what? Like, and that, that flight school is perfect for us. Yeah. And you both have really interesting backgrounds coming into this. So uh, Dr. Ashley, tell us what your background is. And then uh, Derek, do you have your background? So um, I've been a musician since I was two years old and a professional musician since I was five. <laughs> but I, I, um, I am a cellist, a concert cellist. Um, I travel all over. Um, I give anywhere from 150 to 250 concerts a year. Um, I've really been immersed in that musical world my whole life. Um, that's that's really my background in a nutshell. So, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's just so cool. Like sidebar of all the places you've traveled to, which is your favorite? Whoa. Okay. It, okay. I love Norway and Iceland. Um, there's something magical about the fjords. Um, for me, it's like, and my favorite state is Maine. So Norway is kind of like, actually, we got married in Norway, Maine. Yeah. So, of course, it's very like there is a like tether there for me in my soul. Um, but I also am partial to Switzerland. Okay. Those, those are my two favorite. What about Italy? I do love Italy. Um, I had a, a music festival with my best friend in Tuscany, and that was astounding, uh, astoundingly beautiful. So, I mean, I, I, if I had to choose a continent, probably Europe, just because of like Vienna, Switzerland, um, like Aust I just love all, all of those, those like really their cultural meccas. I mean, that's kind of like where Western music was started too. So, or in the arts. So of course I have a natural pull towards that. Um, I just, and, I and you, and you and Mozart have so much in common. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty yeah, cool. That, that's flattering. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do love Salzburg too. So yeah. That's awesome. All right, Derek, what's your background? So my cultural mecca is Athens, Georgia. So um, while Ashley was touring the world, I spent a ton of time at the University of Georgia. Uh, so I have kind of a... Um, a versatile like past and career history. I was in um, finance for a little bit. I, you know, series six, 63, managing portfolios, um, uh, helping folks uh, with their estate or, you know, pay less taxes through different investment vehicles. Um, I was in marketing and sales. So uh, print advertising, um, I was a circulation manager for a really large newspaper in Georgia. Um, and then um, my whole life, I was a swimmer. So that's what got me to the University of Georgia. I swam for the University of Georgia um, in uh, 1998 to 2000. And then I left the sport for about 10 years um, doing the other stuff I just talked about. Uh, and then um, I had kind of a crazy situation where I had never finished, I'd never finished college. Kind of like when I retired from swimming, I just, I was lost, you know, and there was an opportunity that came up, uh, literally at, at like midnight, I went and applied to the university of Georgia, like 10 years later, it just as a, I don't know, uh, some kind of crisis mode or something. We were right in the middle of the financial crisis, like where we lost the housing market. And um, I was like, well, maybe they'll take me back. They did. They, they took me back within days. I couldn't believe it. And, and I thought I was just lucky, but it turns out they have a wonderful program for any of their athletes that never graduated. And as long as they have, you know, uh, a couple years left and they keep their grades really high, 
they'll, they gave me a full ride. So I was able to go back, um, reunite with my coach and the team. And uh, I started coaching United States swimming. Um, and one thing led to another. Um, uh, I started coaching in Florida. Um, and then uh, various teams would um, reach out to me and, and recruit me along the way. And so uh, for the past 12 years or so, um, I've been a United States swim coach and uh, an aquatics director. So I direct the entire facility and make sure we monetize that pool and create as much revenue for that department as possible with not only like USA Swimming, but tons of other aquatic programming. Um, so that's kind of my, my deal. No, I, I love it. And you both have such varied backgrounds, but what you do have in common is solo economic dependency. So yep. if, if Ashley's not playing cello or you're not coaching or managing, you're not generating any income. And so you go in the flight school and you see, okay, here's a way for us to start, you know, solving not just our money problems, but also our time problem. And so you really up level after boot camp and go into coaching. What is yeah. what was that like? And and what what really made you guys make that commitment? Well, I'll say out of the gate, um, it, at boot camp. So we were in flight school starting in January. And we went to boot camp in August of the same year. And in that boot camp, you know, we learned what the one-on-one -on -one coaching was. And we, we heard the current coaching, some of the current coaching students speak. And it was like the immediate response, like intuitively was, and it wasn't even really thinking. It was like, uh, there is no other option but to do this. And like, it became a necessity almost immediately as soon as we, we were taught what this coaching program was. And we're like, we have to do it and we have to do it now. I think we did our application like- In the hotel in the, room upstairs. Right after we learned that it was like available and um, we just, we couldn't get started soon enough. And yeah, I mean, the overwhelming <clears throat> feeling was this is a fact, this is happening and it has to happen now. We don't have a choice. Well, I, yeah. and this business was so important to us that flight school gave us a foundation to understand what we had to do. But for us, it's not enough. Uh, we would like to pay for education. We would like to pay to expedite issues, problems, brick walls. We want to have access to the coaches. We want to have access to people that are already where we want to be. And so we, 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 I listed one of the rental houses, sold it in a few days and we were able to, we were like, we Look, leveled up and yeah, burned the ship. Yeah, your yeah. burned the ship speech at boot camp <laughs> wasn't lost on us. We literally listed a home, sold it in a couple of days, and was able to um, put that money towards our business. Yeah, you know, I, I love that story so much. And uh, I won't repeat it. You have to come to boot camp. But really, you know, for our, from our perspective, we're looking more for commitment over cash. Because you need to have that as your foundation to, to be successful in, in the land business. Commitment first. And then, you know, if you have that commitment, you'll find the cash and, and you'll make the investment. And it is an investment. So, but everybody's like, well, what's my return on investment going to be? And how long before I make back this, this money? Because it's, it's not insignificant. So for you to like, how, how has it been financially uh, running your land business and growing it from the time you started to today? Okay, so this is a living, breathing animal. So just because you learn one way to acquire land or one way to sell land or two or three or four, you have to do them all because the underlying market is constantly moving, shifting and changing its mind. So what works um, one quarter will might not work 
on the acquisition of the sales side the next quarter. So when you look at it like black and white, like, oh, hey, I um, put this much money into flight school or coaching, um, I should be able to make that back this way with this sale. Well, it might not look like that. Some of our biggest um, injections of cash have been from selling notes, right? Not even selling land. Um, our second, first or second, maybe tied for first, biggest injections are cash sales of land, right? But the brick by brick building of the business and ultimately what we want to do is build a note portfolio. That's what we want to do. We want to build a note portfolio of at least a million bucks. That's the first benchmark. And the note portfolio of a million bucks will tap into that passive aspect of the business so that we can have passive income so that we can focus on running the business, freeing up our time. Um, and so a lot of folks are talking about selling land, selling land, selling land. Yeah, that's what we do to get there. But we also, it's really, if you really look under the, behind the curtain, we feel like it's building a note portfolio. And, and so when you're talking about return on investment, Mark, we made just from the various ways of creating capital in this business, we made enough to pay for coaching in the first two months of this year, right? Um, that's not to say that we sold that much in land. We did sell, I mean, we've sold probably, I don't know, 20 properties this year so far. And we would, we're usually on track to have more than that, but we're just seeing a slow time during the summer. Um, we've had a, a, a slow summer, but we're making, we're, we're building a note portfolio and we're using, like Scott Todd will say, and I have this sticker on my desk and I drew the levers. He says, pull on all of your levers, pull on all of them, ARB, wholesale, retail, even if you got to raise money and, and, and go that route of fundraising, or if you go the route of JVs, there's so many different ways of injecting capital into this business. Um, that the numbers can the numbers can be a little misleading. Somebody can say, "Oh, I made this much money in January and February." Yeah, but you didn't do that selling just land. You had to pull on another lever to inject cash in your business and sell one of your notes, right? Or two. It doesn't matter. So there's like this arsenal of stuff, and you've got to understand how to deploy all of that and when. So. If, if you're running out of capital, instead of saying, well, I'm not going to buy any land this month, you reach out to other investors and see if they have any land for ARB so that you can have a really small uh, you know, capital outlay. You can control that property and now you're back in the game, right? So there's always a way to make this work. And that's what she and I are getting really good at during coaching. Yeah. And I do want to add everything, everything that he said. And also, you know, the way that we, we view our business has really evolved and deepened. Like I think of it as like, like when we were in flight school, like there's a follow the recipe and like, in a sense, it's almost like two dimensional or three dimensional. And when we're in coaching, it really kind of elevates it into like, more the fourth dimension and you begin to see it's not okay i need to, to, to act, you know acquire a property and sell a property we're interested in something which to some people might you think oh well you know you might be not making as much money as you might want to with the idea of velocity so when we started to inject velocity as our essentially our philosophy everything just opened up and you never really would have predicted how it would have opened up the business, but it just got those gears oiled and like left and right, you know, we're moving things. Um, but if you were to stop and say, Oh, you know, I, I'm going to acquire this and then 4X and sell it. 
And velocity isn't, doesn't always work that way. You might be like selling a note for, you know, 50 cents on the dollar. And you think, oh, I really, you might think I want to sell that at full value and get as much money as possible. Well, you might be sitting on that for six months, you know, and then your business is stalled. So like that velocity really like, you know, got our business really to expand quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's so funny about the selling notes because nobody ever wants to sell notes. Right. It's, it's emotionally, it's it's too hard to see that passive income go away. Even though financially, when you do the numbers, it's like the greatest thing yeah. you can do. Right. Yeah. The numbers are like crazy, but but it's just like human nature. Uh, we we don't want to take that that short term loss, even though it's going to give us a huge long-term gain. Um, it's so funny because uh, I think it was Nicholas Tlaib, the the author. He's like, you know, we're just not built like, because he like lose money every day in the stock market. He's like just bleeding a little bit every time, every day. And then have like these massive, you know, outsized gains that destroyed all of his, all of his losses, yeah. which is sort of like, you know, venture capital investing. So yeah, it's just, it's Look, yes. T- T- Taleb's a man. I've got every single book he's ever written. I just don't like his stance on Bitcoin. I think he's just, <laughs> I think he's trolling Bitcoin. Like, is that it, dude's uh, way too smart. That dude's way too smart to not understand Bitcoin in its entirety. Yeah, yeah. And the same Nicholas Taleb. You know, it's so funny that, you know, not to get off on tangent here, but some of the smartest people I know hate Bitcoin. And some of the smartest people I know love Bitcoin. It is. It, you just have to do your own research and see where you fall yeah. philosophically on that side. Well, look, I've got a Bitcoin mining machine. I have Bitcoin. I, I think long term it's the future. Yeah. Uh, but I still see the other side of it. There's still security issues. Like my, you know, my buddy Ori is in security, and uh, he's a genius. He's like, I would, you know, I wouldn't put a dollar into Bitcoin. Yeah. Well, Michael Saylor says the nuclear codes are first to be hacked with atomic computing. So like Bitcoin might be like, um, that's what everybody says. They're like, it's just, there's there's security issues there. Well, it's not the first thing people are going to go after. Right, right. Okay, not, not to go off on, the, on, a, on a crypto tangent. Let's get back to you guys and, you know, the systems, the processes, the people. So speaking of the levers, right? The three levers of growth is other people's time, systems and automation, and other people's money. From the where you started in coaching to today, how much time are you spending working in the business versus on the business? Um, I say, look, and, and Tate Litchfield will back us up on this. We want to have the most boring business possible. Okay? Seriously. And we don't need to unnecessary, like Ashley and I are very analytical. We're very type A. We understand where our efforts need to be and where they don't. And we understand what we need to outsource and what we don't. Um, and we have a, a very good pulse on our business and we run a super tight ship. So we spend a good amount of time still doing some stuff ourselves. And it's not because we can't outsource it. It's because we still have stuff to learn. Okay. And that's important to us. Um, So yes, we have VAs. We don't do our own marketing. We don't do our own posting. We don't do any of that stuff. Um, But the stage that our business is in right now, um, we don't have to outsource everything yet. So we would say, we would say that we're probably a quarter of the way to where we would be completely hands off. Um, Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. But we also, you know, I've spent a lot of time and I know Derek has doing certain things, um, you know, creating automations. So we do have a lot of really cool automations in place. Um, that alleviate more time. And I do want to add, like, fortunately in our business, he and I gravitate 
towards different things. And somebody said it the other day, and it's the perfect way to put it. We fit like a zipper. So like I naturally like doing, you know, X, Y, and Z, and I love it and I'll do it. And he does, you know, A, B, and C, and like, it just helps our business. And yeah, I think the way Derek put it, it's like, we're very clear of where we next want to delegate. And when it's time, we will. Um, and we've also gotten incredibly efficient at those things that we do already. Um, and so it's just kind of like its own machine at this point. And yeah, we got some good SaaS. We also have a fantastic training library we've built um, so that, you know, when those positions do come up, they go to the library and off to the races. Yeah, I, I love that answer because there's a big difference between abdicating and delegating. And so many people don't have have done have don't have like the depth of knowledge and then they delegate it and then they get so frustrated when their VAs don't execute the, the way that they, they want. Right. And it's because it's the blind leading the blind. You abdicated it, you didn't delegate it. Right. So I really love that answer about we want to learn it more first before we get it off our plate. And um, so I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. So, okay. Do you guys have a favorite deal you want to talk about? Well, uh, I know hers. I know hers already. Yeah. I, I think I, Go ahead. okay. So um, Derek was at work one day and I, f I forget what I was doing that it was a weekend. And I think I, it was like my first weekend off from performing or something. And I just checked my email and I literally like, like yelled out loud and no one was here, but I was just like, Oh my gosh, because, um, I, I do all the accounting. So I get all the emails that are like, so-and-so made a down payment on, so, you know, and like, I like, texted Derek. I'm like, you didn't tell me we had a sale. Like I couldn't believe he didn't tell me like it was a first time ever. And, um, and I was like, you know, a million exclamation points of like, you know, and not, it, it was incredible. And so, um, he called later and he's, and he like had no clue. So he does all the sales. So he's always the first to know, but this was my first to know. And I got to be on that. Like I, it was like candy. Like this person. <laughs> so to cut this person, i never talked to them. Oh, wow. They they just, that's what she's website. getting at. Yeah. They just yeah googled, that's what she's getting at. He just Googled and like made a down payment. The next part of this sale is Derek comes home and we're on the computer and we're writing and he's like, you know, there's a property right next to it. And then we got the other down payment. I mean, it was like the well, million dollars. So test. I called the guy to, to say, hey, congrats on your new land. Legal's drawing up the contract. It'll be there in 24 hours via DocuSign. I know we haven't talked before. Do you have any questions? <laughs> and he's like, no, I'm good. I'm like, well, check this out. I also own the property right next door. And he goes, send me the link. And so I sent him the geek pay down payment link and he bought it. <laughs> so that was two, uh, zero work, zero. Oh, that, that's a nice one. That's yeah. a nice one. And okay. Yeah, 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 that's gotta be, that's gotta be the best. All right, so if, you're, if, if someone's listening to you guys and they, just are a little unclear, unsure. What advice would you give them about, you know, the land business or even going into coaching? The tough, the yeah. tough question. It is tough because this business can be tough. Okay, so when when you're drawn to the dream of freedom and passive income, um, that's a strong pull, right? And then you get in this community and you realize everybody is such a fantastic human being and you realize you're home. You're like, 
wow, I, I found, I found it. Like that's the eureka moment, right? Well, then all the work starts. And then what you learn in class doesn't happen exactly the way it was supposed to, right? So it's on you now to pivot whatever that may be. And we've, this summer, we've done 15, 16 small pivots to marketing, pricing, acquisition, everything. Deals of the week, every, yeah. e everything. So the advice would be, yes, this system and education is in place to help you get to those dreams that first got you interested. But nobody's going to save you. You have to do everything that you're taught and more. And that's where the community comes in because you talk to the other investors, you talk to your coaches, you, you go back and look at your notes, right? Um, so I would say... Don't be under any false assumption that just because you have the answers that it's going to materialize. It's answers plus action. And constantly being able to pivot and shift and be a freaking master at whatever it is you're trying to do, whether it's marketing or acquisition or sales or SAS or whatever. And the other tiny little bit would be, you don't need to overdo it on SAS, okay? Everybody out there is gonna tell you that, that builds a SAS is gonna tell you you need that SAS for everything and you'll, you'll have death by a thousand cuts. So do your LG pass, do your geek pay, do your follow-up boss, um, you know, maybe Zapier, stuff like that, right? but you do not have to sass it to death because if you think SaaS is going to solve all of your problems, it's not you at the end of the day, you still have to buy and sell land all on your own. So that's my two cents. That's, um, that's a great answer. I would say the first thing that like just jumps out is um, keep going, be consistent. And have a really, really powerful why and believe it with every fiber of your being and all the rest of it will just be, okay, this is just a sign. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. And I, I find I've something I've learned uh, recently is um, when there's a wall or pushback, it's a sign you're doing something worth doing. And I, I take that almost as a challenge. So in this business, there are, there are walls and really all it is, is is to test you and to make you stronger, push through it. And really all that took to push through was consistency and a reminder of your why. And you got it like that. That's at its most simplest way I can put it. Um, yeah. And go, go to all the masterminds. Yeah. The community is, is, easily the best part of our business, at least, at least for me, yep. like the people and then the resources. Yep. Um, but first it's really the people and yep. without it, I mean, that just makes this fun. It's, and it's, yeah, we're beyond fortunate to be a part of a community that is like-minded and like, like hearted. Like we all have a very similar heart and a very similar soul. We're all very similar in that respect. And um, man, when we found you guys, we just felt like we were at home. No, it, it's, yeah, we're, we're so lucky. It, it, you know, you guys are our whole community. It's, it's, it's amazing. And I, I always say that at boot camp, like there's not anyone in that room I would hang out with and, um, and just enjoy. So yep. just, it's, you know, it's, it's really a magical thing. But we're getting short on time here. And uh, I have so many more, you know, things we could talk about because you guys are so big on mindset and we could actually have a part two about that, uh, you know, one day, but uh, 
Before we get to the tip of the week, I do have to give a shout out to our sponsor, which is Flight School. Learn how the next 16 weeks can transform your life. Start building up that passive income quickly, safely, efficiently with Scott Todd, who's done it thousands of times as your Sherpa. And all you have to do is go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call. And that flight school tuition ain't going to cost you nothing, guaranteed. Just show us your work. The the landgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Derek, Ashley, we're at that point now. Your mentorship has been invaluable. What is your tip of the week? All right. So the tip of the week is a book. All right. It's by Wallace D. Waddles. This is a book called The Science of Getting Rich. It was written 112 years ago. It's not a new book. I've never read anything like it in my life, ever. There are so many times when reading this book that I think of this community. And I think of Mark. I think of Eric and Tate and Scott and Scott and Mike and Taria. It's, I really don't even want to talk about it very much, but if, 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 if you can go out, I think it's five or six bucks on Amazon, but it's, the science of getting rich it may or may not be what you think it's about. You know, Zeno loves that book, by the way. It's, it's the most incredible thing I've ever, I'm speechless throughout the entire thing. And you know what, like when you bookmark a page and then every page is bookmarked. So you just quit bookmarking them. And the whole book's highlighted. And the whole book is highlighted. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. That's our tip of the week. Anybody that reads that book, understands it and again puts it to practice like takes action on it i can't wait to see what it does for us actually it's already working for us wow well my tip of the week is learn more about derek and ashley check out their land business at the fifth horse.com we'll have a link to it fifth is the number five uh check it out and i just want to thank the listeners and remind them the only way i'm going to be able to bribe our coaching clients to continue talking about their businesses and their lives and their journeys. If you do three little favors, follow, rate, review the podcast, send us a screenshot of that review, support at the I'm going to send you for free a signed copy of Dirt Rich, which currently has a value of about 12 Bitcoin. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> not, 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 not really. Not really. <laughs> Yeah, um, but honestly, like the book when I bought it, whatever it was on Amazon, it was twenty. But I had no idea what I was getting into. Mark, what that book has provided us just today, and we're nowhere near where we want to be, is invaluable. There's you can't even put a price on it. Thank you, thank you. It's true. Well, this has been amazing, you guys. Thank you so much for taking your time, sharing your hard-earned wisdom with the community, and. I think I'm seeing you soon, right? Uh, we're not going to be able to go to San Antonio. Um, Atlanta. Uh, yeah. Atlanta, October. Boot camp. All right. Well, let's do this. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. All right. See you, Mark. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Are you ready to learn how you can start building a passive income without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents? Schedule a free consultation at thelandgeek.com forward slash training. Let freedom ring.